Considered by some as a curiosity in the mid-1970s, the video game industries have grown from focused markets to a mainstream media of decades of past. The world of gaming has now become a billion dollar market, and games of all varieties are welcomed into the homes of children, teenagers and adults alike. But with any mainstream medium, there will be controversy. There exists in this country. I'm talking about gun control and a whole host of different issues. The big headline from this so far is his comment, the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. You might not even notice it anymore. Some scientists have proposed that video games increase aggression in young people, and with tabloids quick to embrace theories such as these, it has led to a mass belief that these conclusions are fact. Science has actually been unable to determine whether or not video games really do affect violence in real life, so we decided to take the social route. Instead of sticking a child in a science facility with a copy of GTA, we actually spoke to people. Well, yes, I do have a good, a good big knowledge about video games as I play them a lot. A lot. Now, some games are very fun, very fun indeed. Well, gaming's always been a part of my life. So I remember the first game I played was Time Crisis on the PlayStation 1. There's always going to be violence in a video game, no matter what. Even if it's aged three above, there's always going to be violence. But it's just how the kids and the parents want to take it, really. Well, quite a few games are violent nowadays. It's like Pokemon, violent. Um, Call of Duty, violent, obviously. But there are a few games. It, it, it just seems more popular that they have to be violent because of the fact they're more interesting it's not boring if you're beating something up you are you you play as lego pirates and you have to go around solving their quests you kill just enemies that come towards you and you have to attack them before they attack you it can be very fun and most suitable for kids i think it's really down to the parents themselves, what they feel is best. But if I had a 17-year-old child, I don't think I would really be that bothered. It all depends on how they're going to feel, because if they're comfortable with their kid playing with it, then that's their decision. It, it's a good stress relief, I think. There is an argument, uh, I guess a catharsis argument, saying that actually violence in video games is a good thing, because it kind of purges people of those feelings, and that um, if it wasn't there, then it could lead to an increase in violence. It's rather fun for me to go around. I find it rather fun to go around killing bad, c killing opponents. Though it's rather frustrating sometimes when you may die. Some games I get really frustrated about. Sometimes I may go, or I, might, I might have gone over and hit the console a couple of times very hard. I did not do any damage, I don't do any damage to it. Though it seems to take out my anger quite well. If you die in a game, you get a bit stressed, maybe curse a little bit, but then you restart and play again and take it from there. Kids play different games, really, so I, I don't aim behaviour problems or anything like that on games. I, it's just a natural thing that they could have or couldn't have. Actually, there's been a drop in violent crime in the last few years, and that keeps being recorded, certainly in the last three years, I think, there's been a drop in violent crime. Um, and there has been connections made with video games for this reason that kind of young men are not hanging around on street corners bored um, and getting into kind of scuffles and fights that actually they're at home playing video games. But it's just an easy target really that oh someone shot someone in the game, it's happened in real life, link it together. But I personally think that they shouldn't just blame video games because it can be any reason whatsoever. It's, a, it's an easy an easy answer really for the media to, to just to come up with really um, to say you know it's all the fault of video games. I think if we look at it historically um, you know we could see similar concerns in the 50s and 60s with the widespread um, use of television you know kind of people started to have television in their homes for the first time in a mass scale um, and there were lots of concerns about what television was doing to the minds of young people in particular and it always seems to be cited around the idea of young people I, th I think the knee-jerk reaction comes more from um, 
you know, kind of sky and the sun and the mirror. But they ne- really need sound bites in order to kind of get the information across to their audience. Um, so I think whatever cultural art form you have, there's always going to be someone that's going to cite it as a reason for why people have become more violent. Okay, so the public seems to disregard violent video games as a serious threat to children, but let's give science its fair chance. We thought we'd try out a test actually used by scientists to determine whether video games affect aggression to see if we could produce any results. It works like this. The Taylor Competitive Reaction Test pits two people with opposing viewpoints, for example different political perspectives, against each other in hope that their bitterness will spare their desire to win in a simple reaction game like Snap. As an added incentive, the winner gets to zap their rival. In this variation, rather than having clashing opinions, our test subjects will be playing a violent game or non-violent game to set the mood. And since we don't have an electrical generator to hand, we'll be using Tabasco sauce as a forfeit. This is the hot sauce paradigm. Um, not really. I just thought I'd be a... Mm, I'm just not really a mean person, so I thought it'd be quite nice to my opposite of a payment opponent. Well, I'll just be nice. But really to give them a lot. Really cool. So is that a no? No. I was uh, shooting down cars and police people, so I was quite amped up and quite malevolent. And after the game, I was quite competitive. And uh, when she lost, I was happy. I didn't have to do it, so I gave her a lot. No. Depends who I like on it. On you sure? Probably. Unsurprisingly, the test didn't help us find out anything. It seems like it's the opinions of the people that will lead the way in this research project, and who better to ask than the people who actually make the games? We went to Comic Con London to pester some game developers on the topic. So, overall, it is a game, it's a multiplayer game to get you and your friends together and to be playing in the same room, effectively. But it's a game where you're running around, kind of fighting simple combat, but the rules are constantly changing. You have the ability to bend the rules of the game to suit yourself, uh, which kind of adds this whole element of trolling each other, basically, where someone can have a, a massive advantage and suddenly you flip the game entirely. So, rather than outplaying them, you just change the game that you're playing to win instead. And that's kind of what we're aiming for with this game. And it's just a good laugh with your friends, basically. What are your opinions on video game violence? Now, and obviously this is a really big question at the moment. It's something that's been going around a lot in the media, and I can totally see why, because obviously stuff goes on in everyday life, and a lot of the time it gets kind of turned back onto, oh, the reason why this happened is because he was playing violent video games. I think Dark Souls is a good recent example. There have been cases where people have been talking about that. But me personally, it's not something that has ever really, it certainly hasn't affected me anyway, and it's not something that really bothers me, because there are so many forms of media. I mean, Dark Souls, I'm going to go with that example for a little while. Sure, there's combat in there with like swords and you're going to end up actually attacking people. But I could also be getting that from watching films or from reading books. I mean, I grew up reading books like The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. And for me, that's exactly the same thing. And it, 
In fact, you could even say that's potentially worse because that's you actually being forced to use your imagination to come up with these kind of things. But it's not something that's ever really affected me or anybody I know, and I couldn't really say that it's necessarily something that does. And those people that may get affected by things like that, I think there are probably deeper lying issues that they need to deal with themselves, and I'm hoping that there are ways for them to actually get that support out. It's like blaming the never-ending story, for example. Yeah. Like, the the never-ending story has got more violence and it probably affected me more. Yeah. Like watching that horse drown in the mud and stuff, that like chewed me up. That was horrible. And like, I think it's just because people don't realise how absurd this argument is because I don't know enough about the games themselves, I think. And I think that's where we're sort of falling short here. Twenty years ago, Judas Priest got all this trouble for having playing their songs backwards resulted in people being violent and aggressive towards themselves or something. And now we look back now and go, what a bunch of idiots. Like, why, what were we even thinking coming up with that? And I think sooner or later people will come to that same conclusion with games as well. Must be much more behind it than, you know, just, just playing games. It's, I, I don't think that's how it happens. You sit down, play games, and then you just think to yourself, well, Let's, you know, cause chaos and just you know, do stuff. I don't, I don't think so. There we have it, a mystical journey through the treacherous paths of video game controversy. And what have we learned? We've learned that no matter what the answer is, this question will overshadow our gaming experiences forever. And all we can do is take solace in the fact that we are enjoying ourselves. Because video games are about fun, socialising, developing skills, and of course, getting awesome quick scope kills. amount of criticism of, of the trends of American influence on things like horror comics and indeed on the films. Do you feel that there's anything really, when you get down to it, in the suggestion that American influence is towards a spread of juvenile delinquency to the world? Juvenile delinquency is, a, I think, a symptom of the illness of our age. It doesn't come from lack of playgrounds or bad comic books but of a great longing for youth to have something to rebel against. You wouldn't say that children are imitative and that they tend to imitate what they see or read? If they were, they would have come from the bear pits and the Globe Theatre and committed some rather extraordinary acts in the Elizabethan well, days, you know. But it's not at all scary. It's not at all scary. So don't go worrying yourself. <laughs>